Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you this day to bring the Word of God. This is Brother Wilson calling you from Arlington, North Carolina, Arlington, Virginia. I'm coming to you to let you know that God is still alive and that He wants to have a relationship with you. No matter what you're going through in life, no matter how hard things are for you, no matter what the things in your life that you're struggling with, you can always come back to God. Because God wants to have a personal relationship with you. And the only way that we can have that personal relationship with the Father is that we must submit ourselves to Him. We must turn back from the way that we are living in this world and come back to the Word of God. You know, the Bible says, Jesus said, not to live in the world, but be of the world. And what that is saying is, that's saying that we can live in this world, but we should not be of this world. We should be of the Father, of the Spirit. We should live in the Spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the only way that you can have a personal relationship with the Father is through Him in the Spirit. You know, worshiping in the natural, we're worshiping in the natural, we're worshiping with people, we're worshiping what people think about us and how people treat us and how people dislike and what we think people saying about us. And we take all those things and we are blinded and we are held back and we are kept in bondage with these things and not allowing our spirit to be set free that we may be one with the Lord God Jesus Christ. So therefore, you have to get on your knees and pray. You have to pray the prayer and ask God to deliver you. You have to ask God to give you deliverance. You have to ask God to deliver you from the things that are holding you back in your life. You have to ask God to say, Father in heaven, I need your help. I've been trying to do this on my own for so many years, oh Lord. And on my own, I always fail. You ever get that feeling when you trying to accomplish something in your life and by going through the changes and dealing with certain people or dealing with people in general it tends to break you down and take your mind and your concentration off the path that you want to go on you know there's two paths in life the Bible speaks of it you know it's that hilly path and that narrow road and the the road is so hard to get past and the obstacles are so many until you get beat up just going across that road. That's the road to glory, the road to heaven. And then there's that big old road, that large super highway out there where you can find anything on it. You can find drugs, you can find sex, you can find murder, you can find money, you can find cars, you can find luxury houses, you can find the beautiful women and men, all for your liking and choosing. That's the road to hell, damnation. That's the road that many of us are on. God wants us to get off that road. He wants us to come to Him. He wants us to fight that narrow road. He said that it wouldn't be easy if you choose my way. And if you choose the way of God, your road will be hard. Your road will not be easy. What is there to gain if it's so easy? What will you achieve and get from it when there's no lesson to be learned. When there's no pain or suffering to go through. You know, when you suffer things and you go through trials and tribulations within your life. And life unexpected changes that hurt you and changes that come within you that stop you from achieving the things that you want to do. That is the test that we must go through. What is there to gain? What is God to use from you when you have never went through anything. By going through these changes, by going through these trials and tribulations, you've learned the lesson. You have matured in spirit. You have matured in mind. And you have received the blessing of knowledge and understanding for these things that the Lord give you in order to move forward. So once we have went through these trials and we have accomplished that we've we've fixed the wrong now we can move forward and then God can use you to work in someone else's life one day when they're going through these same troubles same tribulation life is a cycle we all go through the same problems in life our children's our grandchildren's our parents and now us 
God allow us to go through certain things in life in order to reach maturity and have faith in Him. That's the key here. Do you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to get to that next level? Do you have the faith to trust? Do you have the faith to withstand the test? That is our test in life. And without faith, you cannot pass the test. Without faith, there's no existence because we exist by faith because the Lord Jesus Christ is our existence. And if we don't believe in him, then we have no existence. So, my brothers and my sisters, if you believe and you've been hurting and you've been full of pain and full of anguish and hurt all your life, you need to take a deep look at yourself and say, what am I doing and what am I not doing? And who am I following and who am I not following? Those are the questions you must answer yourself. You must ask yourself those questions because, one, if you are following the word of God, your life will change. The old person will go away. The old things that you used to do, like to do, party, hang out, lie, cheat, steal, fornicate, those things will go away and the new you shall emerge. And when the new you emerges, the old you parts away. And some of the people would not like the new you. But don't worry about that. Because you are serving the word of God. That's the only man that you have to answer to. On this earth, none. Our Father in heaven. That's the only person that you should be concerned about asking and fulfilling and doing the right things in life to please the Lord God, not man. God should be the center point of your life. He should be number one. He should be first in your life. You should get up on your knees in the morning and pray. And I said, get up on your knees as soon as you get out of bed. The first thing you should be is up on your knees in prayer with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanking him for another day. Thanking him for life itself. And that's another thing that we take for granted. We take for granted that life is given. That the things we have is given. All we need to do is take a, a walk. Go to the graveyard and take a walk and look and see the sizes of the graves that are there. Infant, teens, toddlers, adults. The Father call all home and all doesn't reach maturity and purity in life. Some die as soon as they are birthed. Some die minutes after. Some die weeks, months, years later. Whatever time we have on this earth is given by the Father in heaven and we must cherish that and we must thank him every single day and praise him. God is a jealous God. God doesn't allow to put other things and other gods before him. And other things sometimes we put before God is our job, our children, our marriages, our homes, our money, the materialistic value things that God has given us to live and survive. Do we not take care of the animals? Do we not take care of the birds? Do we not take care of every living creature on this earth? God supplies their needs. So why he should not supply ours if we believe and trust in him. And that is the key. We must believe and trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And through him all things shall be possible in this world and in the next. If we, have to, if we are to receive eternal life, the only way we will receive that is through our salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Heaven is not automatic like everybody think it is. We get into heaven by the grace of God. And we get into heaven based on the things that we do on this earth. And how we live on this earth in the eyes of our Father. Because on judgment day, we all shall pay account for the things that we have done and continue to do until the coming of our Father in heaven. You know, Revelation, he said that the books shall be opened. And all shall be judged accordingly. So that's everything that we do on a daily basis is being recorded by the angels, good and bad. So therefore we must continue to change and grow and cleanse our heart and treat each other the way that we would want to be treated. That is the golden rule. If we as people can love each other instead of hate each other, then this world shall change. 
and it will change to be the way that our Father in Heaven wants it to be. I'm Reuben Wilson, and I'm bringing you this message. And this is the Word of God saying that we must change our ways or feel the wrath of the Father upon His coming, and all shall be judged for the things that they have done. Woe I say unto you, that every man shall pay account for the things that he have done in this earth before the Father. And if you have not accepted me, then you have not accepted my Father. And in order to see my Father, you must come through me, the Word of God. Jesus is Lord, and I'm telling you, change. Blessed be the name of the Lord God, Jesus Christ. Amen.